This lesson is going to be an extension of the trigonometry lesson based off the sides and the angles. Uh, and in it, we're going to focus just on angles of elevation and angles of depression. And first off, we just need to know what, what they are. The first thing you need to know about angles of elevation or angles of depression is one side of those angles have to be horizontal. Now, when I look at my angle of depression, I notice that here's my horizontal side of my angle, and then the other side is going I can get it highlighted here. The other side's going down, or it's depressing. One side's horizontal, the other side is going down. In the angle of elevation, again, one side is horizontal, the other side is going to go upward, it's going to elevate. That's how they get their name of angle of elevation and angle of depression. Now what I want you to realize here is I have a line up here, or, and, a line, oops, and a line down here, horizontal, so they're parallel. Now I have two parallel lines, they're cut by the transversal. My transversal would be the, the red and blue together. I have a pair of alternate interior angles here. And what we remember back to when lines are cut by a transversal, then the, or when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the alternate interior angles are congruent, which tells us the angle of elevation and the angle of depression will be congruent. And the reason I bring that up is because sometimes when we look at our problems, it's more, more of an advantage to solve for the other one may ask us to find the angle of depression, but it's easier for us to find the angle of elevation. Now, my first problem I have here, we have a salvage ship that's using sonar to determine that the angle of depression to the wreck on the ocean floor is 13.25 degrees. Notice it's already in my picture. I have that right here. Now, it tells us that the depth chart shows that the ocean floor is 40 meters below the surface. I have that right here in my picture. And what it wants to know is how far must diver lowered from the salvage ship walk along the ocean floor to reach the wreck. So here's my diver. He's walking here down here to the ocean floor. Well, another way to look at it is what happens if we just put the diver in the water the diver swims to a point uh, directly above the wreck and then falls down. So either way, we're going to find that, that length that the diver is going to walk or that the diver is going to swim. What's nice about this one is the picture is already there. All it's asking us for is, how long is the green? Well, we have this right triangle, because we're going to assume, go with the assumption, I know that can be a little dangerous at times, but we're going to assume that we have a right angle there because we're going to drop down vertically. Well, now I look at my triangle and I see from the acute angle that I know, from there I know the side that's opposite of it, and I'm looking for the side that's adjacent to it. Well, I think back to my trig functions, and the, the one that deals with opposite and, adi and adjacent is tangent. Therefore, I'm going to go with the tangent of my 13.25 degree angle. I know that that is going to equal the opposite side, which is 40, over my adjacent side, I'm going to call it x, which would be right here that I had marked in the green. Now it's a matter of solving my equation turn into a proportion, and then I can cross multiply. I find out that 40 is equal to x times the tangent, 13.25 degrees. Solve this equation by dividing both sides by the tangent of 13.25. And now I have myself a calculator problem. I know that x is going to equal, and just Go to my calculator, I'm going to type 40 divided by the tangent of 13.25. Now again, remember to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Oops, hit the wrong button. So 40 divided by the tangent of 13.25. And I hit enter and find out that it's 169.87. So I can fill this in. The approximate distance that that person is going to have to walk is going to be 169.87, and notice meters was the label before, meters will still be the label. Figured out how far the diver has to walk or swim. Now my next one, no picture this time, so we're going to have to draw our own picture. It tells us that we need to find the angle of elevation of the sun when a 7.6 meter flagpole casts an 18.2 meter shadow. Well, I like to draw my picture. I know I have a 7.6 meter flagpole. I'm going to call it right there. This is 7.6. And then it, it tells me that we have a shadow of 18.2 meters. There's my shadow. Very beautiful. 
beautiful picture, I know. And we need to figure out that angle of elevation. Well, if I complete this, I have the triangle there. I'm going to assume that whoever put the flagpole on the ground made it perpendicular to the ground, and it wants the angle of elevation. Well, my angle of elevation is right here. I'm just going to call it x. And I look at this, and from my, from my angle, I know the opposite side, and I know the adjacent side. That's telling me that I'm going to have to use trig, so I'm going to need the tangent. Well, from what angle are we going from? From the x angle. And tangent is going to be equal to my opposite side, which is 7.6, over the adjacent side, which is 18.2. Now remember on this one, we're looking for the measure of an angle. So this is, the way I look at it, it's all calculator now, because technically what we're going to do is we're going to take the inverse tangent of both sides. And that's going to give me the inverse tangent of then that fraction that I have, the 7.6 over 18.2. So I'm going to go to my calculator. And all I need to do is, since I'm looking for an angle, I push second. Whoops, wrong button. I'm going to push second. Get rid of that. Second, tangent. So I notice that I have my little inverse tangent shows up. And then I need my 7.6 divided by the 18.2. I push enter, it's going to give me that measure of the angle, which is going to come out to be approximately 22.66 degrees. So I just figured out the measure of my angle, my angle of elevation of the sun at that point in time during the day is 22.66 degrees. And the last one I have, this one's a, a little longer, um, hopefully not any harder, but it will take a few more steps. This one we have uh, Olivia's in a lighthouse on a cliff. The top of the cliff is 110 feet above the water, and Olivia's in a place in the lighthouse 85 feet above the top of the cliff. She observes two sailboats due east of the lighthouse. The angles of depression to the two boats are 33 degrees and 57 degrees. And we need to figure out the distance between the two boats. Now, when you look at that at first, there's a lot going on, and it might be a little confusing. So let's just start breaking things down. It tells us. Um, that there's a lighthouse on top of a cliff. And it tells us that the cliff is 110 feet above the water. We also know that Olivia is in a place in the lighthouse that's 85 feet above the top of the cliff. So I'm just going to start there with that part. And I'm going to go, well, I'm going to say that my water is here. And then I have the cliff, which is here, which is 110 feet. But then I also have Olivia that's even higher up in the lighthouse, another 85 feet. All right. So she observes two sailboats due east of the lighthouse. So she know, we know that there's a sailboat here, caught there, and there's a sailboat here. And it tells us that the angle of depression to those two boats is 57 degrees and 33 degrees. And now we have to figure out how far it is in between them. I'm just going to call that distance between them x, because that's what we're looking for. Now let me put in these angles of uh, angles of depression. Now remember, an angle of depression is really not any different than an angle of elevation. So I look at this triangle here that's the, the red, the red to the blue, and then the purple, or excuse me, orange and pink. I have an angle of elevation here. Told me the angle of depression is 57. Well, I'm just going to convert that to be an angle of elevation. And then I also have another one that's 33 degrees. Angle of depression, I know it says that, but I'm going to convert that into the angle of elevation because they're always congruent. Now, how do you tell that, know that this one's 57 degrees and this one's 33 degrees? Well, I go with this. I'm going to use my picture and go by what it looks like here. Now, be careful with that because we can't always do that. But if one's 57 and one's 33, well, obviously the bigger one is going to have to be the 57 degree angle and the smaller one's going to have to be the 33 degree angle. Now, I know it's not drawn perfectly to scale, but it's kind of in the ballpark. Now, what I look at on this is I see, I see a triangle here. Actually, I see multiple triangles. But what I'm going to look at here first is I see this big triangle from about the 
cliff and the lighthouse out to the farthest boat. Well, I could find, let's see, let's go with, let's just see here. I can find this link right here. And then if I go to my other triangle that I'm looking at, I'll show you that one, that triangle I see right here. And in that triangle, I can find this link. So if I know how long the green segment is, and I know how long the red segment is, all I'm going to need to do is subtract them to figure out how long x is. I'm going to start with my yellow triangle, and I'm going to figure out this green. In my yellow triangle, I see the 33 degree angle. I know the side that's opposite from it. That's this piece here, which is going to be 195. And I'm looking for the side that's adjacent to it green piece here. Well, that's going to be a tangent of my 33 degree angle. And we know the tangent is equal to the opposite side, which is the 195, over the adjacent side. Why don't I just call this y for the time being? And then I need to solve my equation. So turn this equation into a proportion by putting 1 underneath the tangent of 33 and I'm going to cross multiply. I have 195 equal to y times the tangent of 33. I'm going to divide both sides by the tangent of 33. I'm going to get my calculator out. I'm going to figure out what y is equal to. Let's come over here to my calculator. I'm going to do 195 divided by the tangent of 33. I push enter. And I find out that that boat or that sailboat is about 300.27, I believe it was feet, no, feet away. So I have my answer here of approximately. Now my next one, I'm going to come back and now I'm going to look at what I have highlighted in the green triangle and I want to figure out how long this little red segment is. Well again, 57 degree angle, I know the side opposite from it, I'm looking for the adjacent, I'm going to use tangent all over again, just with different numbers. Now this time it's a tangent, but my angle this time is 57 degrees. Tangent's going to be equal to the opposite side, which is 195 over the adjacent side. Let's just call that Z for the time being. It's supposed to be a Z. And then solve my equation. Turn into a proportion. Now I have 195 equal to the to Z times the tangent of 57. This time I'm going to divide by the tangent of 57, figure out that z equals uh, whatever it says in my calculator. Now this time I need to do 195 divided by the tangent of 57, and it comes out to be approximately 126.63. Remember, for me to find what I have in my picture as the x, I need to take the y, subtract the z. Well, that's 300.27. I need to subtract 126.63, and I'll have my answer. I'm going to go back to my calculator. And I'm going to type these numbers in. Now some of you have the new operating system, so you could just use the up arrow and actually go up to the 300.27, push enter, and it's going to give you the whole thing, and then subtract the 126.63, and again you could scroll up to that, push enter, and you get all the digits, but for mine I'm going to go with the approximate of 173.64. So my final answer for the distance between these two boats is 173.64.
I say? I forgot it already. Or 73.64. Feet between the two motors. Didn't actually have to measure it. Indirectly did it with measures of uh, angles and angles of depression and a little trigonometry. If you have any questions, make sure you ask. I will definitely help with anything you have.